with the bows. You can't do anything to please that lady. Hey, Mr. Bows! Don't you say hey to me, you ugly girl. You say good afternoon, Mr. Bows. I'm so glad to be getting a real baton. Where are you two going? Playing hooky, I suppose. Why not call up your principal and tell him? Oh, it's Saturday, Mrs. DeBose. It makes no difference if it's Saturday. I wonder if your father knows who you are. Mrs. DeBose, we've been going to town alone since we are this high. Don't you lie to me. Miss Monty told me you broke her scuffer log armor. And when she tells your father, he's gonna make you wish you'd never seen the light of day. And you, why are you wearing overalls? You should be wearing a dress and a camisole. If someone doesn't change your ways, you'll be going up waiting tables. Think, a bitch waiting tables at the OK Cafe. Ha! Oh, come on, Scout. Don't pay any attention to her. Just keep your head up high on being gentlemen. Harper Lee illustrates the contrast between the young children and the old Mrs. DuBose from a social perspective. For instance, Mrs. DuBose criticizes Scout for wearing overalls and acting generally unladylike. On the other hand, Jem's telling Scout to be a gentleman gives insight into his unawareness of these ladylike qualities, most likely prompted by his mother's death. Also, the reader will see more signs of his immaturity in the social sense when he suppresses his emotions into response to Mrs. DuBose's comments. These immaturities amount to the children's inability to see beyond the insults, and in general, the superficial. The following scene shows a contrast with Atticus's response. Well, son, I cleaned it up for her and said I was sorry, but I ain't, and that I'd go over there every Saturday to make them grow back out. Well, you shouldn't have said sorry if you weren't. She's old and ill, and you can't hold her responsible for what she says and does. I would have rather her said it to me than either of you, but we can't always have our druthers. To completely understand why Atticus acted the way he did, we must first see the situation from his perspective. Miss DuBose, like most of Maycomb, is vigorously opposed to what Atticus does in the courtroom and at home by not upholding social standards. However, Atticus dismisses this by commenting on her physical state as being old and ill. As will be developed further in the next scene, Miss DuBose can be seen as a representation of some of the worst qualities of Maycomb. Thus, the reader will find that the way Atticus responds to Mr. Bose will reflect the way he will deal with his problems later in the novel. For instance, Atticus's respect for Mr. Ewell after the trial shows his ability to understand the situation. In the same way, Atticus wants Mr. Ewell to address him and not either of his children. Is that you, Jim Finch? And you brought that dirty sister of yours? My sister ain't dirty, and I ain't afraid of you! Come closer, children. Get closer to the bed. In that pleasant district of Mary England, which is watered by the River Dan, There extended in ancient times a large force. Mrs. DeBose, are you alright? Lee uses imagery to develop Miss DeBose into a character representing some of the worst of Maycomb's qualities. One of these qualities is racism, witnessed by the reader when Miss DeBose expresses her disapproval of Atticus defending a Negro. Another trait includes the sexism that Miss DeBose expresses towards Scout by her constant disapproval of her unladylike characteristics. The imagery includes rain-rotten gray houses, dirty pillowcases, and cuticles growing over her fingernails. However, as with Maycomb, Atticus has hope for Miss DeBose. 
and does what is in his power to make change for the better. Did she die freely? As the mountain of air, she was conscious to the last, almost conscious, and cantankerous. She still disapproved heartily of my doings and said I'd probably spend the rest of my life bailing you out of jail. She had Jesse fix this for you. Old hell devil? Old hell devil? Why can't she leave me alone? Shh. I think this is her way of saying everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right, Jim. You know, she was a great lady. A, a lady? After all this time, a lady? She was. She had her own view on things, a lot different from mine. I told you that if you hadn't lost your head, I would have made you go read to her. I wanted you to see something about her. I wanted you to see what real courage was, instead of getting the idea that courage was a man with a gun in his hand. If when you know, it's when you know you've been licked before you begin, and you begin anyway, and you see it through no matter what. You rarely win, but sometimes you do. Miss DuBose won, all 98 pounds of her. According to her views, she died beholden to nothing and nobody. She was the bravest person I ever knew. In this scene, Atticus explicitly defines what real courage is. Only one chapter before this, Atticus received renewed respect from Jim after shooting Tim Johnson in only one shot. Lee uses juxtaposition of these adjacent chapters to clearly illustrate what Atticus is explaining to Jim. However, Jim doesn't accept Miss DuBose's gift for a few reasons. Clearly, he is inexperienced in handling death and is not secure with the situation in general. More specifically, he is showing his lack of ability to grasp what Atticus is trying to explain. The reader will later see Jim's interest sparked in similar manly entities such as chest hair. Jim clearly has a road ahead of him in his coming of age. Mr. Bo's death casts an optimistic light on Mako and is a testament to Atticus's wisdom.